the videos contained in this section uh, deal with electricity and uh, we're going to be talking about electric charges, we're going to be talking about Coulomb's law, uh, electrical force associated with electric charges, electric fields, um, we're going to talk about current and resistance and voltage and capacitance and um, electromagnetic induction and magnetism and how all of these, uh, all of these electromagnetic uh, waves um, how they're all associated with each other and um, you can check out this section on electricity which covers uh, links and topics uh, for all this stuff all right so we have obviously we have our, uh, our videos uh, this one here talks about um, lightning and electromagnetic induction um, what causes lightning uh, we have videos um, that you can watch uh, from the Mechanical Universe series uh, where you can see all these uh, videos online uh, for free. You can watch um, the video on uh, Millikan's, um, the Millikan experiment where uh, Robert Millikan uh, discovered um, the charge of an electron. Uh, we can see how static electricity, we come down here and watch videos about um, now ben Franklin uh, originally uh, came up with his ideas about uh, static electricity. Like I said, those are all free videos uh, that will help you uh, in learning more about, um, about static electricity and electric charges. Uh, some other things we have up here is we have our, uh, our student note packets. So as you watch these videos uh, that we have right now, you can uh, download uh, one of these note packets and you can uh, take notes uh, as we go through the presentation. Um, you'll see that a lot of these uh, note packets are associated with the videos that I'm creating right now. And you can uh, copy these notes down and then have a better understanding uh, answering the questions um, for learning about physics. You just saw the student note packets, but there's also uh, online presentations. Once again, you can, uh, you can watch these videos um, on uh, different things like static electricity, uh, different demonstrations on static electricity. Uh, you can also go online and uh, you can take, um, you can do online simulations uh, such as uh, we have static electricity, balloon static electricity, we have uh, electric field hockey uh, demonstrations. All these links are on the sciencewithmrnoon.com uh, page. Besides my videos, you can also go to the MIT uh, website where you can see uh, Walter Lewin's uh, videos uh, for a whole year of uh, AP physics. Um, you can also uh, go to a, uh, a site called uh, Hippocampus Physics where you can do uh, flash simulations on um, any of the physics topics. Uh, you can pick a section and you can work through um, these demonstrations and they ask you a series of questions uh, for you to demonstrate your knowledge uh, that you've obtained through those uh, sections. And you can also, after you've completed all of these assignments, um, you can also go to uh, take a uh, quiz, whether you do a, uh, a quiz that um, is uh, New York State Regents um, style, or you can take one that's a college physics style uh, quiz where you are asked a series of questions and you can um, answer and see if you're correct or incorrect. And then uh, once you're done with that, you will get a score on the end and you can, uh, you can see how much you've learned. Once again, if you go through and take these uh, New York State Regents uh, exam questions, uh, you will be fully prepared uh, to pass the New York State Regents uh, once you've reached that point, if that is what you're taking. If you take the uh, college level quizzes, then you should be prepared to pass your college uh, level physics exams. All right. so. Uh, now that we've talked about uh, all the information that's on this uh, site that deals with electricity and uh, magnetism, um, we can go on to today's presentation. All right, so we're going to be talking about electromagnetism. And we're going to start by talking about uh, static electricity or electrical charges. And 
Static electricity are charges that are um, stationary on um, insulated uh, materials. And the Greeks first discovered this, uh, that with amber, if they uh, were to uh, rub amber, uh, whether it was jewelry, that they could get an electrical charge, a static charge off this amber. And this is actually, um, the Greek word for amber is electron. And this is where we get the, uh, the word electron to name uh, electrons, which uh, are these charged particles that um, move about freely um, from one object to another, creating uh, static charge or electrical charge. Um, it wasn't until Ben Franklin, though, that uh, Ben Franklin, uh, he studied um, static electricity after he had retired from his printing business. He had studied um, static electricity that he had seen a, um, a guy doing a traveling amusement show with um, static generators and he could raise people's hair with the static electricity and he could shock people um, with static electricity and he was intrigued by this so he uh, bought the equipment um, from this traveling um, static magician and started to study it uh, and discovered uh, that he recognized there's two opposite types of charges and he named them positive and negative charges. Uh, he also set the standard that um, he said if you uh, have a glass rod and you, and you uh, rub this glass rod, you can get a positive charge on the glass rod. And he knew that objects, he took a bunch of different objects uh, like amber and uh, like glass and he um, charged them up and placed them next to a device uh, known as an electroscope. And we have a couple uh, simple electroscopes here. Uh, here's uh, one in Erlmeyer flask, and um, we have an electroscope over here. And when you move a charged object by an electroscope, you will see that the um, electroscope will demonstrate that there's charged particles near it. Um, and what happens is the little leaves, the, the foil leaves in the electroscope uh, will move, uh, they will separate when charged particles are uh, close. So here we have a, a simple electroscope and um, Ben Franklin said that if we take glass and, and we rub it with silk, that the glass will become positively charged. So if we put it near an electroscope, we see that the electroscope uh, demonstrates that this is charged. Now, there's two types of charge, and Ben Franklin decided that he would call the charge on a glass rod positive. And charge on a plastic or rubber rod uh, can be created with fur, or your hair, or if you rub a balloon on your hair, um, you can see that you get this charge, and this is negative. So Ben Franklin decided that um, glass rods produce positive charges, and plastic or rubber um, rods or strips would produce negative charges. And we still stick by that standard today. By understanding that um, plastic produces a negative charge, and glass uh, consists of a positive charge um, when friction is applied to them. Uh, we can then study the um, attractions and repulsions of charges and determine some uh, pretty simple rules. Uh, this is a neutral object right now, and if I place a, a negatively charged uh, object near this uh, neutral object, the negatively charged ruler will attract the neutral charge of this uh, rubber rod. If I take a positively charged glass rod and I put it near the plastic, the neutral plastic rod, you'll see that the glass rod, which is positively charged, also attracts 
uh, the neutrally charged um, rubber rod. So we have this mutual attraction between objects that are uh, neutrally charged. Uh, they're attracted to objects that are negatively charged, and they're attracted to objects that are positively charged also. And uh, that's because we have an induced uh, polarity that takes place that if we have equal positive and negative charges on here, when I uh, place the positively charged glass rod next to the neutral, the negative charges that are on this come towards, come towards uh, this positively charged rod and are attracted to this positively charged rod and that moves it. If I use a uh, negatively charged uh, ruler, then the negative charges are pushed to the back, leaving this side mostly or primarily uh, positively charged. And since the negative are on the other end, the positive charges are attracted to the negative uh, side. Now you'll see though, if I take this and I rub it, now this has become uh, negatively charged. So now that that has become negatively charged, if I place a negative charge next to it, you can see that the negative charge uh, is repelling is repelling the negative charge that's on the uh, rubber rod. So now these uh, negative charges that are on here, they all repel each other. So there's negative charges on this side and there's negative charges on that side. And when I place another negative charge next to it, they can't, they have no place to go to. They can't go to the other end of the stick. So they are repelled by this ruler. Now if I see, or, or if I take this uh, glass rod, and I take the glass rod, and I place the glass rod by the, uh, by there, then you should see that the negative charges that are on this still are attracted to the glass rod because the glass rod is positively uh, charged. All right, so now I have, uh, I have this, this uh, large board uh, balanced on a glass globe. And you can see how much force can be exerted by uh, electrical static charge. So if I take this negative charge in here, this board should be neutral. And if I, if I uh, place this by the board, then you should be able to see that there's an attraction towards the negatively charged ruler. So the static charge has enough electrical force to turn this entire board uh, a good distance. Now this, is a, this board has a neutral charge, so it's attracted to a ne negatively charged ruler. Uh, but I can also take the glass rod which is positively charged, and I should be able to take that glass rod, and you can see that with the glass rod, I can also uh, get this board to move towards the glass rod. So the positively charged uh, glass rod also attracts the uh, neutral board. So Charles Coulomb came up with the inverse square law relationship between force and distance. So if I double the, if I double the um, distance, I only have one fourth as much as the force. Or if I have uh, half as much of the distance, I should get four times as much force. So we can see this relationship here. If I, if I have a distance where this begins to move, charge this up. If I have a distance where this begins to move, and then I try and get half that distance, I should get approximately four times as much force. And you can see that this is a greater acceleration taking place uh, by the closer uh, distance, and it moves over a greater distance too. So you can see a relationship, uh, an inverse relationship to force and distance. That as the distance